Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we will discuss a question related to cystic fibrosis. Hope some of you have an idea about cystic fibrosis. We will see the question first, then we will move to the content area. I will read the question. The nurse teaching the parent of a child diagnosed with cystic fibrosis will advise the parents to choose foods that satisfy which recommended diet. So the question is asking to us what kind of or what is the type or the recommended diet that is good for a child who is diagnosed with cystic fibrosis or which kind of food will meet the demand of the uh, growth for a child who is diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. It's a very simple question but we should have an idea about cystic fibrosis then only we can clearly pick the correct answer. We will see the options. First option 1 gluten free with the added protein. Option 2 high calorie, high protein, high fat diet. Option 3 high protein, low fat, low phosphate diet. Option 4 high protein, low fat, low sodium diet. Maybe some of you already got the answer, but we'll see the uh, cystic fibrosis, what is it and how it is affected, what kind of food and what are the interventions. Then we will come back to the question. So what do you mean by cystic fibrosis? It is an autosomal recessive disorder. What are some other kind of uh, autosomal recessive disorder? Most of you know that sickle cell anemia, that is also an autosomal recessive disorder. So in cystic fibrosis, it is mainly caused by a mutations uh, in a gene on a chromosome 8 out of the 23 pairs of chromosome. So it is an inherited life-threatening disorder that damages the lungs and the digestive system. So this will mainly affect the lungs and the digestive system. So how it will affect? In cystic fibrosis, that will affect the cells that produce mucus, sweat and digestive juices so when the client have this condition either uh, ju or the product the mucus production or the sweat or the secretions that will become more thick and sticky so once it will become more thick and sticky what will happen this will plug up the smaller air passages and plug up the small ducts in the gastrointestinal tract or the gastrointestinal system so as a result, it will block the pancreatic duct. Once it will block the pancreatic duct, what will happen? If the pancreatic enzyme, it is necessary for the proper digestion and absorption of the food contents. That is necessary for the uh, growth of our body. But it is blocked the pancreatic duct, so there will not be a pancreatic enzyme coming to the bowel area. And once the pancreatic enzyme is not there, the client will not get the enough nutrients from the food what he have. So that's why the client who is diagnosed with the cystic fibrosis, they should have some pancreatic enzyme tablets and some uh, enzyme supplements or vitamins before or just prior to the meals. Because as the normal body mechanism, they are not getting the pancreatic enzyme. And in, if you come back, uh, come to the lungs, this will plug up the uh, air passage and the client may develop some of the respiratory complications. So this is a very life threatening compli complication or a condition that require immediate and intervention and also a progressive treatment. I hope it's clear, clear to you uh, what is the stick fibrosis and how it is affected and which, so what kind of disease or what category. There are some other kind of disease, you know, that autosomal dominant disorders like Marfan syndrome. So this is an autosomal recessive disorder. Then to meet the growth needs of a client who is diagnosed with cystic fibrosis, a diet high in fat, calories and protein is required. Because even though they are having enough food, it is not properly absorbing the nutrients because of the lack of these enzymes. So if the client is not taking a proper uh, well-balanced calorie or uh, food, that will decrease the growth. Especially the child will not uh, attain the normal growth and development based on the age. 
that's why we are providing with this uh, vitamin supplements and the enzymes pancreatic enzyme supplements and also we should provide a diet which is high in calories proteins and fat i hope it's clear to you now we will come back to our question so you will get the answer so option one say here gluten free diet with added protein that is not the correct answer for a client who is diagnosed with cystic fibrosis then in which condition this is correct this is a recommended diet for a client who is diagnosed with a celiac disease so what is the recommendation of diet for a client with a celiac disease a gluten free diet and uh, what are the food or the uh, diet that is uh, they cannot tolerate like we will uh, we'll call it as a bro like a barley rye oats or wheat so the option one is not a correct statement in our question which is related to cystic fibrosis and this is connected with the celiac disease so we eliminate the option one so option two high calorie high protein high fat this is the answer for this question because we already studied client with the cystic fibrosis should have to get a diet which is with enough or high calorie fat and protein to meet the demand of normal growth and development of the body so our answer is option two we'll see why option three is not the correct answer high protein low fat low phosphate diet usually low phosphate diet we will recommend for clients those who have problem with the kidney then high protein low fat low sodium diet we know that low sodium diet wherever because there is more sodium there's a chance of fluid accumulation so what are the conditions we should restrict the fluid accumulation or we should reduce this one heart failure hypertension and ascites so those are the conditions this uh, option for diet will be the recommended diet so our answer for this question is option two and i hope it's clear to you if you have any doubt please mention in the comment box we'll make it clear for those who have the doubts and by for now on the next video we'll discuss another topic